Okay, folks, it's, it's 10.30 and we're going to start. First of all, I wanted to thank you all for coming. And second of all, my name is Whitney Dell, and I'm a member of the Senior Center. And Joan over here wants to know, how many of you are a member of the Senior Center? So if you'd raise your hand. So congratulations, that's very, that's very excellent. Um, great. So um, we are here today. Um, we are here today to talk about the Senior Center. Um, and I got this idea because I was, very, I was very concerned that the city needs to hear what seniors need and want from a Senior Center. I thought it'd be, it was time, especially with the resignation of the last director, that you guys tell everybody, what do you need and want so we can make a path forward? So that was the idea for all of this. I've got to put my glasses on or I won't be able to read my notes. Um, so the purpose of the meeting, as I just said, is to hear what you need and want from MS MSAC. And if you could keep the questions in mind that we created, what services should the Senior Center offer its members? What benefits should MSAC be offering its members and supporting towns? What needs to be changed at MSAC? And what should be the top two priorities at MSAC? We're trying to concentrate the um, questions. Um, this is, we're not here to answer questions, but if you have them, um, you can email um, Diane, who's the um, chair of the advisory um, board. Um, this is not a time for complaints. Um, we, the members of the Senior Center, want to tell the city what we need to formulate a way forward for a vibrant future for MSAC. So the format of the meeting is this. You'll have two minutes or less to express your views. Um, the moderator, that's me, will call the name of the speaker and also tell you who the next speaker will be. Laura Morris will be the timekeeper. And where's Laura Morris? Right here. And she, she's, the, she's the timekeeper. Great. And, right, good, my time is up. Um, also, I'd like to, ex I'd like to explain um, the microphone use. Um, this is Tina over here, and she's the only one who will hold the microphone besides the people up here. So when it's your turn to speak, she'll hold the microphone and you'll speak into it. And people said from the flood meeting in Montpelier that if you don't turn your head back and forth, if you just look straight ahead, that will um, work really well and won't um, give Tina an arm ache in the process of it all. We have an excellent note taker, Mary, right over here. So she's going to be taking um, notes. And Matt, back here, is handling Zoom. So we're going to try to work Zoom into, we're going to try to work Zoom in this. Um, and it may be a we'll, we, we haven't done it before, so we're just going to figure it out as we um, go, go along. But he'll let us know if somebody from Zoom wants to speak. And the people on Zoom, you know, you can use the chat box. That will really help um, if you want to be recognized. Good. And mm, good. We're getting to that part. But yes, if you would turn off your uh, cell phones, that would be great. Um, I want to introduce. Um, uh, Oh, another thing I forgot to say was there's some confusion about services and benefits. And Mary and I went back and forth on this. And I decided benefits are things that make you happy or satisfied. And services are things you get from um, the senior center. Like this afternoon, there's a, um, this afternoon there's a toe clinic. Or you come to coffee at 9.30 on Monday. Um, you know, that's, that's to me a service or you get tax preparation run by Jody here. So I think that's really um, a good thing. Um, also, we have advisory council members in here. So if they would, let's see if I can get them all. Um, so Mary is over here, and Diane is right here, and here's Susie right here. And let's see, and Gail is here somewhere. There's Gail, good. And Rick is here somewhere, Where is he? Over here. And who did I forget? <laughs> oh, Chris. Oh, Chris. Thank you. Good. I think I got them all. Great. So I'd also like to introduce two people. This is Kelly Murphy right here. And she's the um, assistant city manager of Montpelier. And Arnie, 
uh, McMullen is now the director of the um, Senior Center. So, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Laura is a Vitae Council member too. Good. Okay, I think we got them all. Great. So um, Kelly would like to say a few words, and then we'll get this meeting on the road. Hello, everyone. Uh, can you hear me okay? Good. Um, no? All right. Uh, is that better? Thank you. Just wanted to make sure. Um, Kelly Murphy, uh, Assistant City Manager. It's nice to see you all. Some of you I know. Some of you I don't. So thanks for coming. Um, I'm really interested to hear what you have to say today. Um, I want to keep this relatively brief um, in terms of an introduction because we've got a lot to talk about. Um, but all of you saw as you came in, there's a set of talking points uh, that I wanted to provide in advance so that you can take a look at them. Um, this is sort of the background of where things stand today for the Senior Center, so some things to consider. Um, and just sort of highlighting um, key points within this document. I think first and foremost, really, what we're here today to talk about is um, the quality of the Senior Center and the opportunities that exist within the Senior Center. But in order to do that, we've got to get through some tough stuff. Um, so with the transition at the Senior Center, um, with the director leaving um, and a reclassification, and then also some other things, um, declining membership, diminished programming, and then budgetary deficits. And so you can see them within the talking point outline, um, just to kind of give you some sort of facts to look at. I'm also happy to take any questions you have uh, related to what's been provided um, but just kind of working our way through this document, it's kind of in sections. Um, so the first section is really related to the budget, um, management and operations. Um, and then the other uh, items are programming, um, membership, and feast. Um, and so I'll give you time to take a look at this, but if you've got questions, um, we can certainly get into it. But this is also sort of the foundation and basis for what we're going to be looking at when we do our performance and program audit. Um, so then we can sort of get some of the pieces together um, to move forward um, and to not only um, provide the support that's needed, but to provide strength and to eventually thrive. Um, so I don't want to take too much time, um, but I'm happy to be here and I'm really thankful to have this opportunity for your input. This is the first opportunity really, but it's not going to be the last. There will be other opportunities as well. Um, so, without further ado, I'm going to hand this back to Wit, and we'll get started. Good, thanks, Kelly. So, um, who's on first? Um, Nancy Schultz is going to speak first, and then Anne is going to speak next. <laughs> I'm here today as a longtime member, student, volunteer, and instructor because I'd like to see the Senior Center once again become the vibe hub of community life that it was prior to March of 2020. Before the pandemic, MSAC offered 80 classes per term as well as delicious and healthy congregate lunches every Tuesday and Friday. The Tuesday lunches were especially popular with full tables that filled this room. In addition to a wide range of classes and great food, there were many bus and van trips to interesting and varied destinations. Among the current staff members at MSAC, only Norma was here pre-pandemic, and only Norma has the institutional memory to know firsthand how lively this place was. Other staffers don't have this important reference point. However, many of us who have been involved here as instructors and program leaders do remember. Once upon a time, MSAC was head and shoulders above every other senior center in the state. It can be again. To restore MSAC's vibrancy, I recommend the following. Use Front Porch Forum, PSAs, social media, and flyers to spread the word that the Senior Center didn't flood and is open. Mention some of the classes that will be offered this fall. Emphasize the reasonable prices for classes, especially for Montpelier residents. Stress that anyone age 50 and over can become a member. Get back to offering two appealing lunches per week rather than two lunches per month. If you feed them, they will come. <laughs> keep, keep the meal schedules consistent. Switching the days of the week or the weeks of the month creates confusion and causes a drop in attendance. People vote with their feet. They will come back if MSAC offers good food and interesting programs. Thanks for listening.
Yeah, I'm, no, after, after me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you didn't start my timing yet. Thank you for considering the following suggestions uh, by a long time, long time member, instructor, drop-in group leader, trash shrimps, and participant of over 20 years. The return, these are the things I'd love to see for the future of F MSAC is the return of art classes by a variety of instructors, armchair travel talks, bone builders exercise classes, Trips for both the day as well as longer excursions, including cruises, just saying. <laughs> Evening classes to draw in more working people. Congregate meals twice a week. Guest speakers, I really like nature ones, from Vins, Vermont Fish and Wildlife, North Branch Nature Center. Photography, Vermont history, especially Montpelier. Local experts in, for example, beekeeping and raising chickens. I think it's interesting stuff. And the process of designing and implementing creative wood stacking. I am just love that stuff. <laughs> implementing craft classes with guest artists like block printing, weaving, knitting. More and varied choral opportunities. I'm thinking also about a hospice choir. Cake decorating to serve, and then the cakes are, they're gonna, oh. Serve the congregate meals uh, and to Meals on Wheels participants. New and fun physical activity classes, chair volleyball, it's fun. They do it other places, it's, it's a blast. Chair, I like chair massage signups, yeah. Coffee house with some quiet music. Opportunities to serve and to be of assistance to the larger community. The top two priorities for me are programming and trips, followed by number three, meals. Thank you. Barbara Early, and I would like to see the senior center back to our lunches with our band players, just to sit back and just have a nice afternoon of music, a, a dinner and music. Hi, I'm Joyce Wernken, and I retired in 2014 and didn't know what to do with myself. So I decided I would learn to play the ukulele. So I came to the senior center, learned the ukulele, discovered the incredible programs that we hear. And so I, I do art, I do writing, I do ukulele, I do singing with John Harrison. And this is not bone builders, bone builders. The most important because not only am I a very happy person, but a very healthy person. I had surgery in 2019 and the nurses couldn't believe how quickly I got up and what got going again. And I think it's related to bone builders. I'm, I'm sure it is. This, what I wanted to say is this is not an ordinary senior center. This is an extraordinary senior center with a lot of people that are really involved and I, my, my, my wish is that we have a dedicated director to the senior center because when you, when you have somebody that's doing two jobs, they're not, they can't concentrate on, on, on the senior center. And so the senior center to me is so vital, so important that I think we really need um, a dedicated director and then there'll be less of declining membership because you'll have somebody that's greeting people, involved with people, and so it's, uh, I'm, I'm, I think I'm through. <laughs> Hi, 
I'm Janet Leader. I live in North Middlesex, and I'm a member here. My top two priorities for the Montpelier Senior Center are one, the availability of social connection, and two, the availability of physical strengthening classes. The byproducts of those two goals are fun, laughter, and better health. I value the yoga, the writing class, the ukulele group, the bone building classes, plus the occasional day trips in Vermont. These activities are all led by women, which I very much appreciate. I look forward to continuing to participate in this center. Um, I'm Fran. I have really just two things that I want to talk about. Well, maybe three. One is, yes, we need to have lunches twice a week, always. Um, another is, I, several years ago, and I mean several, and also before that, we had groups that met that could talk about almost anything, and we had somebody who could lead each one of them. and. We didn't talk politics, but we talked about current events, things that were going on in the news. And it was really quite interesting to hear all of this. Uh, another thing I'd like to talk about is that I think just the way we have volunteers bringing Meals on Wheels and working in the kitchen, we need to have some volunteers who will pick up seniors who are no longer driving and who would love to come to the Senior Center for a meal or to talk with people. And we have volunteers to do these other things. I think we need volunteers to do that as well. Okay. Hi, I'm Barbara Thompson. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have uh, two top priorities for what the Senior Center represents and what it means to this community. And I think a lot of people have talked about what it means for seniors, but I think it's very important for the community leaders, uh, our elected officials and appointed officials, to recognize what the Senior Center gives to this community. To start with, I would like to point to this page of members new and renewed on page seven. Well, there is a precipitous drop. There were in 261 new members in 2019, 95 in 2023. There were 928 renewed members in 2019 and 662 this year. Now, if you were a community leader, if you were in the mayor's office or the city planning office, you might think that this was due to the fact that nobody really cared about this uh, senior center. For me, as a senior center member who moved to this community in 2012, just after this center reopened in this beautiful, pristine condition that it was, I moved here from Minneapolis, Minnesota, which is not a town that lacks cultural amenities. I found in this senior center the most progressive, most advanced programming that I could have found. I couldn't believe my luck to have landed in this community. I want to mention some of the people that I learned from in those years. Joanne Greenberg in her drama classes. Eric Nielsen in his music classes. Rick Winston, thank you, Rick, in his film classes. Janice Walfren, I learned to draw, a person who thought she could never draw. My time is up, thank you very much. Nancy and Ann for Trash Tramps, and Sherry Olson for Poetry, and Tina for Trips. Well, I, at the risk of, of repeating, I don't want to repeat it, I'm in agreement with everything that's been said here, but when I uh, lost my partner in 2018, I really didn't have any connections here from after moving from California to be with him. And 
you know, taking the, the, the trips in the summer and the bone builders with Nancy and, of course, John Harrison's class is, is my happiest time of the week. I, we laugh, we have fun, and the, the Ollie programs are great. I think, for me, uh, and, the, and the week, I, I also came to the twice-weekly meals. I think, for me, the opportunities to socialize and also to learn new things or be healthy, uh, the classes, um, I was so amazed at the vitality and young at heartness of this senior center when I got involved with it back then pre-COVID. And I just really hope that we can revive a lot of that. Uh, you know, uh, the opportunities here, I, I think that um, there, there are, are many opportunities yet to be uh, it, you know, started here. So thank you. Hi, I'm Jody Pedersen. I w would start with a little bit of gratitude. I am very grateful for being able to volunteer doing taxes for four or five years here. It's just, it's a real hoot. <laughs> and if anyone has a math brain, and thinks they might like to do that also, please talk to me, because we certainly could use more volunteers. And the other thing, I haven't participated in a lot of the classes, but I, it, sound, it all sounds great, and I should do more of that. But I would also want to ask Arnie, or whoever ends up being in charge overseeing the senior center, to really get a good relationship, a good connection going with the advisory committee so that all these people who know what's been happening in this building and all these great ideas, that you're following up with them and, and knowing what's going on. Thanks. Hi, Hi. I'm Nancy. And, um, First of all, I just want to say, I love it here too, like everybody. And this is an aging community. We know that Montpelier has a lot of aging people. Therefore, a lot of attention should be paid to the senior center and, and having a director who is, whose responsibility is here and whose presence is here. Um, other than that, I want to talk about Meals on Wheels, which I deliver for and I'm delivering for today. And we are now, I don't know whether it's the Senior Center or the Council on Aid, Aging, but some of the people that we deliver for are now getting meals from another Senior Center. And Speaking from the people that I know who are getting those meals, they're disgusting. I'm sorry to say it. And some of them are really in need of that nutrition. And we need to get them delivered from here again. That's it. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. Uh, I'm Carolyn Ridpath, and I've been a member for years. And uh, the thing I want to do is, I agree with everything everybody has said, and I particularly love the programs pre-COVID. I mean, they were great. But when I look around, I don't see a lot of diversity. And there are so many people we aren't reaching. There are very few men here. I doubt that there are very many working people here. Um, there are uh, a couple of disabled people. Uh, <laughs> so, so we're missing vast swaths of people in Montpelier. And 20% of the population is over, uh, I don't know, I think it's 55 or 60. So I think we need to make a real effort to be more inclusive.
Okay, and I'm going to speak right up because I am hearing impaired and I have struggled to hear people. So just a couple of points. One, I have loved the remote classes. Tina's Bone Builders, for years, now I can hear everyone. Whereas in the big, echoing, acoustically challenging room upstairs, I could only hear people on a third of the room my side. Second, I would like to say that I have been so moved by everyone's varied experiences, and you all are inspiring me to do more. Tina knows I am such a homebody, but, and I've, I've done Tai Chi, dance classes, of course, Bone Builders Forever, Spanish classes, but there are so many other opportunities, and I would just want to mention one that was very meaningful to me when I had just retired from teaching and I was a new editor. I was working with an Iranian writer in Iran who was having some political threats and Penn International actually got him out of Iran. But during that period, a speaker from Dartmouth, an Iranian himself, a professor of political science spoke you would think that was an arcane topic. The room was jammed. My questions were answered, and I learned so much. And it was really thrilling to have a local opportunity to hear directly from an expert on a topic of international importance that was of personal relevance to me. So I think what's offered here is absolutely priceless, and I'm hoping the Spanish classes come back. Hi, I'm Glenda Otto. I attended the community meeting on recovery, resilience, and the future of Montpelier last Thursday. I'm. Um, I experienced it as a call to action. I'm wondering, could I see the hands of people who were there? Hello, okay. Right now, on the other side of COVID and a devastating flood, we know we're required to wake up and take action. I think a socially active vision is essential for the senior center. We need a director, a dedicated director, and program director who understand and factor in our need to engage in the vital issues of our time. I have a great appreciation for the past vitality of the senior center. We had dedicated director and a strong vision and a program director who really delivered on encouraging vital programs. The result was a vital center with life-giving programs that met the needs of members. In the face of issues like global warming, finding green solutions, need to have expertise on how rivers and waters work in this region, homelessness, none of these have immediate answers. I think we're stunned, overwhelmed. We're more likely to pull back than to have the energy to show up. In the midst of our devastation and grief, there's a need to gather, connect, support each other, be renewed, remain vital, and find ways to take the very personal stand that is needed for our future. And this community is filled, hello, with vital seniors. <laughs> Thank you. I have a friend who's adopted the practice of doing small acts, invested with great love. That is her personal stand. Um, I'm here to just say this one thing, <laughs> that we need to support each other, remain vital, and find ways to take that very, very personal stand we need for the future. We've seen the power of Montpelier alive, Montpelier strong. Task forces are forming to address essential issues in our community. We can get engaged in the task force of our choice. We can 
invite a couple of task force to meet here at the Senior Center. My name is Dorianne Prescott, and I just agree with what everyone has said. I don't know that there's that. I don't know that there's that much more to say. I've I've enjoyed the senior center pre-pandemic, and I just thought it was hard to pick which classes to take. There were so many. It was so vibrant, and it was so much fun, just to see people, the same people every week, to just get to know the teachers. It's. It was just such a wonderful place, and I would really like to see it grow back and um, be as vibrant and as socially conscious and just as friendly and uh, open to all people as it was. That's it. Thank you. Hi, thank you, uh, everyone, for being here. Coming into this room reminds me why it's so wonderful. It's so, I, I'm so happy to see people I know who I haven't seen for a while. Coming to other meetings, I see people I know who I haven't seen for a while. It's just wonderful. And you've had such great ideas that I'd forgotten about that we used to do. Um, I just wrote down some things that I remember that we used to do. We used to be able to go to a swimming pool and it's opened up again. So that would be a great thing if we could start that up again. And uh, coming back to the lunches, that's also someplace where we see each other. And that's, uh, it's just so nice to see everyone that you know that you don't really always see on the, especially now you don't see them on the street because I'm sorry to say I don't go to the streets at this point. Ah. One thing that we used to have, not a very often, but we had, and it's important, is the repair shop. I have a Tony doll <laughs> that needs to be put together, and I would really appreciate having a repair shop where I could take it, uh, or her. Um, and then, uh, at one point, there was talk about having a group like we have for Scrabble for people who do crossword puzzles. These are all great ideas, so thank you. Hi, I'm Anne, and uh, ditto everything that's been said. Um, I've been taking classes, and I feel that the mission and the, the impetus behind the Senior Center just took a hit with the pandemic. I feel like the mission is an ain't broke, don't fix it thing. Um, you, I do see wanting to restore the numbers, but I feel like it's been a treasure and it's already head and shoulders above others. I've been taking classes and um, loving it. So top priority, classes, the meals, both on wheels and here, and affordability. I think the it's been really affordable and it should stay that way. Okay, so uh, can everybody hear me? 
I'm very hearing impaired as well. Um, I hate meetings, so the fact that I'm here is due to Nancy saying, um, you know, we have a choice. We can restore it to the vibrant thing it once was. Or, and, I, and I thought, oh, right, because I've been taking Nancy's class for, I don't know, close to 10 years. Before that, I was in Tina's class, and I was happy with that. I have a great time in class, and I wasn't expecting a lot more. But listening to everybody, I was like, oh, yeah. I mean, this is our clubhouse. This is where we come to have fun. This is where we come to get jazz. This is where we come to be together. And I'm always, I, I, I always am struck by how funny we look because our generation did not expect or does not really understand that we're old. Like, <laughs> like is that a thing? So, um, yeah, I, you know, I'm really glad it came because I feel like all of the things that have been talked about is like, yeah, that would be fabulous. And the person who said we are not getting all the people who would have a great time here, I think it's really important. So outreach, you know, um, I think there's a lot of people that just would have no idea what was possible. And I had forgotten what was possible. So thank you. <laughs> Well, as one of the few men here, uh, I really miss being able to associate with other guys. I worked at my profession for 50 years, and when I quit, I was bored to tears. I didn't know what to do. Uh, senior Center has helped me. And I don't know what the answer is. Um, I was, as I read what goes on in the world today, I realize it's in a completely different language than I grew up with. And I simply don't understand it. I, I don't understand all the social media communications. I don't understand why anybody would pay attention to Twitter or any of those things. And I don't understand what younger people are doing to communicate. And I don't know what the answer is, but I would love to be introduced to what I regard as a completely foreign language to the way I've conducted my life. I just don't use all of the electronic means of communication. And it's very hard to find people with whom you can have a talk. Um, and talking is frequently invasive. And it puts people off. Why, why are you asking me that question? Why is that a concern to you? But those are really efforts of communication. I don't know how we breach that, but it's a very fundamental change in my life. Thank you for listening. Wow, how do I follow that? <laughs> Um, so I'm Barb. I've been in the senior center, I don't know, 15 or 20 years, maybe. Um, somewhat, I can't remember how long. But anyway, it's been a wonderful experience. And I agree with most of what people have said. Um, the, the two things that I look back on and really miss are the pool. Swimming is so important for older people because it's a great form of exercise, whether you're swimming or doing water aerobics. So I wish we could get back to that. And another thing is that we used to 
have a coffee machine over here in the art room where after class you could come with your classmates and have a cup of coffee and socialize. I know there's the cafe, the coffee with friends or something like that, um, but I would like to have something like that available every day. So those are my two things. Hi, I'm Mary Alice Bisbee, and I've been coming since the 1980s, since the last century, let's say, when I lived in Waitsfield uh, and commuted out here. And there was a TV set. We had a nice little social group where we could sit in chairs and talk. It wasn't one great big hall. And I've been coming since before this building was repaired. When they moved us because of the fire, we were moved over there. I've been there. I've been there. Bill Dolger and I have been on the uh, advisory committee when it was not an advisory committee. We actually made decisions, and we weren't trying to make money for the city. We were, uh, you, when, when you joined, you got a membership. You were able to use the printer. You were able to use the computers. There was all sorts of free stuff here. This is what I'm talking about for diversity. Uh, we have a lot of wealthy, uh, well-educated, uh, college-educated, I should say, mostly people here, who enjoy the programs, and that's wonderful. But we don't have the diversity. We're not feeding the house housing people. They used to come in and eat for free. And we had meals two or three times a week which is very, very important for congregating. Uh, my degree is in gerontology, and I know that the senior centers were started for the poor, for the people that were lonely, for people who didn't have anything to do and didn't have anywhere to go and no friends. And this is what I consider is the most important thing about the senior center. It is diversity. It's diversity of age. There are many of us here over 80, and I haven't seen them in a long time. We don't get a chance to socialize. We only have it twice a month now. My time is up. I'm sorry, but I could go on for probably a long time. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Julia. Um, I don't generally come to the meetings and since I retired I have not spoken in front of a large group of people so I find myself having sweaty palms and being kind of nervous. Um, yeah, I see that. It seems like a lot of people, I came to the meeting a little bit late, but it seems like a lot of people have been speaking very eloquently and, and heartfeltly about all the wonderful programs and all the incredible meaning that this center has for folks, for so many people. Look at all the people that are here today. Um, and it's a community forum for so many issues. Um, I had the privilege to um, watch the development of this senior center from a distance um, over a period of many years as Jana Claire was tasked with building this center. And I want to say that there, there was so much creativity and openness to new ideas and openness to new people and networking with all kinds of people in the community to bring the finest teachers here and also to create uh, an incredible group of volunteers who do so much in this community. But if, if anybody here thinks that that can be done, um, in another office off with tasking it to somebody who already has a lot of responsibilities on their shoulders and not have a person here who's dealing with, I was an administrator also, and I, the personnel issues that come up, the issues amongst volunteers that come up, um, 
all of those things have to be dealt with very skillfully because any one or two of them in a six month period can blow things up. And it takes a very skilled director to deal with all of the personnel issues, the volunteer issues, to keep everything going, and to infuse this place with the creativity that, it, that has brought it to the place that is so beloved by so many people. So I'm very concerned about that. Yeah. So I wasn't, I wasn't planning on talking here, but I realized I'm a very weird creature here in this room. Um, we moved here, my partner and I moved here about two years ago, and we were very lucky to run into the senior center and trash tramps and other things we do here, and it's been very, it really helped us um, get into this community. Um, but I do see that getting people our age into the senior center must be difficult. So. I'm just going to focus on one thing. Uh, I bring, I came from uh, a tech side, and I think one of the things that's inhibiting getting people, new people, yeah, everybody in here has been here for 20 years, um, but getting new people in here, uh, new people really expect online services. They expect being able to pay their membership online. They expect a nice website that says, here's the schedule, here's the classes I can sign up with, I can just do it online. Um, and if you don't have that, there are people, and I am almost one of them, but not quite, uh, that's like, if that doesn't exist, I'm not interested in doing it. Uh, it. I'm so used to that ease that I want that there. So I really think the senior center needs to think about having a dedicated website, having a dedicated payment system, a registration system, something like that. And that I would go some distance to help pull in younger people who expect that. My other topic would be um, classes here. We haven't done a lot of them. I don't know what it was like before COVID and before things got shut down. Um, we've done some classes here. They're great. Uh, but I, we would both like to see, my partner and I, um, more variety of instructors, um, having the same class, you know, eventually like, well, I'd like to take that art class from somebody new. So recruiting more people to come do that and then providing more varied times and into the evening would be great as well. Hi, I'm Lindsay Wade, and um, I first got involved when uh, there was no senior center. It had burned down, and Jana Clark was the director, and um, she got a hold of me because there was a band back then called the Swingin' Over 60 Band, and they needed somebody to substitute once in a while on the piano or the keyboard. So we did it, and sometimes we'd be at St. Augustine's Church, Sometimes we'd be at the high school, and the place would be packed. People would come, and for the hour before the meal was served, people could sing with us. I mean, it was all stuff people were familiar with, or maybe they were learning, you know, as we were learning. And, uh, and then they'd dance. And eventually, um, I never became the real keyboard player. I was always just uh, the fill-in, but I loved to come, so I did it whenever they wanted me. We did move into this beautiful building, and the people would come for that hour before we ate, and the room was packed. Uh, not originally, but they would start coming in and coming in, and then there was this one couple in particular and others who would get up and just dance through the whole thing. It just, it was, it was just beautiful. And other people would come up, we had a microphone, and the band got kind of better and better, I thought anyway. And, uh, um, and then there was COVID, and the band disappeared. And I think something like that, where people are involved, but they don't have to worry about being social, they can come in for that hour when people are playing music, it could be you know, different types of music. And the other thing I must, must say, Jana was always here for at least part of that time that we were en encouraging you know, this band uh, and the people that came and um, 
and filled the room. And the meals were really, really good. Um, that's pretty much it. Thanks. Um, I think the services that the MSHE should offer are classes, regular meals, health clinics for flu shots and foot care, tax preparation, estate preparation, and opportunities for seniors um, to gather and share time together. The benefits of being an MSAC member should offer a healthy, healthier way of aging through exercise, companionship, volunteering, and a chance to learn something new. What needs to be changed at MSAC? If you're hiring a director, seniors need to be involved in the process and have a chance to meet prospective candidates. We need a director who understands geriatric issues and is fully present to members. They know senior names, they drop in on all the various activities that happen at MSAC. Um, also, program, finance, membership, fundraising, all those committees need to meet regularly. The top priority to me of MSAC at the moment is the Meals on the Wheel program. Financing of the program should not be the sole responsibility of MSAC. Keeping the program going has taken up a lot of the last director's time required great efforts to write grants and hold fundraising events. The cook only cooks meals for the program and not the congregate meals, which is why they're not so regular, for the seniors at MSAC. Perhaps there could be a collaboration now that we're in this period of change with the food bank, which is looking for a new place where the two services maybe could work together on offering this vital service. The second priority is to rebuild our membership but this will have to be on hold until we get our space back. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Cindy Bogard. Um, I just want to say I commend the wonderful bunch of ideas that have come out um, over the course of the hour, and I so agree with the uh, idea of needing a dedicated director whose first job is probably outreach um, so that we can build our membership again. I have become a novelist since I retired, and it's due to MSAC. I took a class from Maggie Thompson. She inspired me, and so did the other people in my group. And I've written two novels since then. That's in the last three years. So now to the ad part. Um, I thought maybe it would be fun to have a twice a season book talk um, here at the center. And I volunteered my own book for uh, the inaugural event. And the next one will be um, uh, Rick Winston's book on the Savoy. I thought one fiction, one nonfiction. This is the, my idea for programming. So I just wanted to tell you that um, my book, um, A History of Silence, sorry. <laughs> um, but um, I'll be talking about it on Thursday, September uh, 21st, um, right after lunch at 1.30. Um, and so what you need to do, though, is read it between now and then. I have a couple of copies floating around free. I would sell you one for $5 off today, $15, or you can even owe me it later if you want. Um, uh, sorry, I would say I would send you all the Bear Pond, but I can't. Um, I w if you want to pay me the retail price, which is $20, I will donate five of it to Bear Pond Books along with the donation I'm willing to make. Um, but anyway, I have a few books here today if you want them. So I just want to announce mine, September Thursday, September 21st at 1.30. And also, um, Rick's um, is, is going to be uh, talking about his book, Save Me a Seat, A Life with Movies. Um, it was just published... Uh, in August by Rootstock. Well, sorry, I'm going to go anyway, even though my time's up. Um, and this is um, going to be at th Thursday, November 2nd, uh, at 1.30 also, again after lunch. Thank you. How are we doing? You know, this winter when the power went out and I was sitting in my apartment, it was getting colder and colder, 
I thought, wow, the senior centers must be open as a shelter for when this happens, and it wasn't. But I'm wondering if it could be, if it could be Montpelier's place um, when things like this go wrong. I'm Devorah Jonas, and I didn't sign up, but I have a couple of comments. Um, one, that there should be opportunities for us to volunteer in the larger community. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, OK. Uh, um, the non-audition singing was fantastic, and we should definitely keep that going. I'd like to see programs to which we invite the larger community. Speakers, um, I'm not sure what else there are there. And also access to a notary public, uh, wills, all the information that we need regarding dying, because we're all going to do it. And we also all have friends who are doing it. It would be nice to have a central place where one could gather the information and have access to a uh, notary public. Thank you to all of you that stuck to the time and those of you who almost stuck to the time. Thanks. Uh, we have somebody's cell phone up here, so you'll need to come claim that. Nice pink, was it pink? Yeah, it's pink cell phone. Um, good, I wanted to thank everybody um, for their comments. Um, you have a comment sheet, so we'll happily accept that at the end if you want to write down some more comments. We also have Diane's email address up here if you like email and want to email her um, your comments or your thoughts. And Matt, how many people did we have on Zoom? What's that? I know, but how many people on Zoom? Oh, 25, hooray. Let's give them a round of applause for hanging in there. <laughs> Good. Good, I'd like, um, Diane wants to say something. Yes. Okay, so I wanted to thank all, uh, everybody who helped out with this meeting. Um, I think it was very successful and it was very inspiring to hear all these comments. And anybody else forever hold your peace? Poa wants to say something. Here he is. We just want to invite you to stay for the meet. We want to, I want and you don't need to Based on the anymore. awesome uh, cooking that Chef Joey has been doing today. You're so cute. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. So I'm Chef Joey. I'm the senior chef instructor for the Community Kitchen Academy in Barrie at Capstone. Right? I, I don't want to yell at people. I have a very loud voice. That's so okay. They need I it. can hold it. I, got, I can hold my own microphone. We're good. Thank you. <laughs> So, uh, we have four students back there who are fantastic, and they're all back there working hard to cook lunch today for the Senior Center, and we come back and do this every so often, right? Mm -hmm. With you guys, and every... It's supposed to be in about a half an hour. I'm gonna say 12.15 perfectly, <laughs> based on the efficiency of my crew in the kitchen at the moment. It is a roasted pork loin with mashed potatoes, au jus. And we have carrots, and we have a little salad to start. And then we have a berry, berry cobbler at the end. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Sound good? So, yes, ma'am. Well, we do have a vegetarian option of mac and cheese that I made yesterday with cabbage cheddar. It's delicious, and salad, and the veggies, too. OK? Yeah? Nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, honey. Hi, everybody. I don't know if I'll really need this because I actually do have a gym voice from my physical education background and coaching. But I want to thank everybody. For those of you... All right. Try that again. All right. Speak, speak slowly. All right. Thank you, Mary Alice. We'll, we'll work on that. <clears throat> So I want to thank everybody for their participation today in the town hall meeting. You know, there's a lot of valuable feedback there 
For those of you who do or don't know me, I've been <clears throat> working for the city for over 30 years. We used to be under the school system as a recreation department and used to run a lot of our programs in the schools as well as on our outdoor spaces. Um, <clears throat> Busy is not something that we get nervous about. I hear people talking about dedicated directors and this and that. You know, in recreation, we've learned to do it all. We do more with less, we always have. Hours are not a concern of mine. You can ask my wife, she knows I live in Montpelier during my working days. <laughs> and, uh, but our goal going forward with the Senior Center is to try to bring back that vibrancy. Some of you may have remembered Bob Jackman, who was here many years ago, and they used to have the swinging over 60s band. Used to be here every Tuesday. Um, you know, when they, needed, when they needed assistance, they would call the rec department to come down and help, because Don Lorenovich used to be the director of the senior center, as well as the recreation department. So there's been a lot over the years on how different things have changed and, and how we go forward. But one of the things that I want to do I'm trying to start out here is meeting with the committees. The advisory board has been great. Trying to meet with the program committee because I don't know if that committee has been overly active in the last couple years. And it's those ideas that come from this group that really help us move forward. Because myself or staff could make up things and you guys might say, I hate that. I don't want to do that. You know, who wants to go bungee jumping, you know? I know some people who do, but not everybody. So the ideas that come from this group so we can start developing and focusing on programs and growing things back and also the membership piece, you know, that's huge. And we got to create value. We got to make sure that we have an office that's open during business hours. Somebody mentioned the warming center. This building used to be a warming center for people and then somebody made the decision not at City Hall, but a decision was made that they couldn't have the doors available open for that. So this is stuff that we should be able to do because we're a community-minded organization. So for those you know, who really want to believe in community, we all have to work together. We've all suffered. If you've seen one of my athletic fields, you know it was under 10 feet of water. We got a lot of work to do and, and uh, you know, it's going to take energy and time um, I'm not a believer that somebody has to sit in an office and be here every minute of the day to have access. I have email. People can hit me with email. It travels with me 24-7. Even on vacation, I get yelled at for checking it. Um, so we're here, we're here for people. And Kelly is a huge supporter, and so is the city, because the city really does support its departments. And this is one of the city's departments. And that's what we're here for. We're here to work for you. It's also worth mentioning that we are. We do want to build towards a really great future for the center, um, but it also you also need to be realistic about the fact there's some constraints right now in terms of the space we're using, which is the city is using the upstairs spaces, so we're kind of challenged to find new spaces. We're working on that. Every, everybody seems to be working on that, but it is. It's like a little bit of a stumbling block, but it's definitely going to happen that we're going to be much better after that. Thank you very much. And I think I'm, I'm all done here. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it.